All right, so I'm gonna add some description to the roller adjustment of the AnyCubic uh, setup video. And I'm gonna put the link to the video in the description and I'll put the reference to the time for adjusting the rollers. But you look at the video and you're gonna see them, they basically take a wrench and they're gonna tighten the roller and he's gonna push it with his hand and there's no description whatsoever. So I felt it's important to add a description to that you know, if you set up the rollers too tight, then you're going to be straining the stepper motor and potentially end up with errors because the stepper motor can't handle how much pressure it has to push this thing around on that extruded rail. If you make it too loose, the print head's going to be sloppy and your prints won't come out well. Uh, one thing that I meant to mention was the fact that I understand that there's people that are tightening that roller so tight that they're actually damaging the uh, material so they end up having to change these rollers so i'm just doing this to try to lend a hand and help out anybody who bought this thing that's struggling with this printer this is a good printer it can do great prints and it is repeatable but you got to tame the beast so i just wanted to add some description you'll be able to see here that i've added with a paint pen i put some marks on these rollers because I'm a very visual person and I think that it helps to be able to demonstrate when you have this thing well adjusted or not you know so I mean the guy takes it and right now you're gonna see I'm going to move it and you're gonna see that they all move but how much pressure is too much pressure you know this this thing of how it feels you know well feelings you know, I wish this thing was to the degree where I could just dial in a setting. Ah, set it to number nine and we're good. But that's not the case with this thing. So right now, my impression of how well this thing should move is that you should be able to move this by the wheel. And you can see right now that I've set it up so that I've got it slipping a little bit. Well, I'm going to get rid of that because... If I take this thing by these outer edges, not by the other side, because I don't want to see the flex in the print head, I want to see if there's any slack in the movement of those wheels on this rail. And there is just a very little bit, you know, so I can wiggle it there to the degree where I can spin this wheel and the print head won't move. So I'm going to fix that. And to fix that, I'm basically taking this wrench I'm going to stick it down here onto this cammed wheel on the bottom and I'm going to tighten it a little bit. You have to go very, very slowly. This thing is like, I find it extremely sensitive. So you do not want to be making big movements here. You make a little adjustment, you come back and you verify. You make a little adjustment, you come back and verify. All right, so I made the adjustment and now I can easily take the tip of my finger and I can roll it up and down this extruded guide and I come over here and there's no play, man. This thing is like really, really solid. I can go to each wheel and I can feel that it is very snug in the extrusion, not over snug. It was a very, very small adjustment and you can see the paint marks, they all move. There isn't one slipping and it, like I said, it's, it's just finger pressure, you know? So I'm really hoping that this will help uh, some people work through their issues. Whenever you have issues, you go from A to Z double checking. Something happens, well, the thing is, is that you can actually likely wear these wheels down a little bit or they could come a little bit loose. So it's like, oh, my prints are suddenly going wrong. Oh, my checklist is I start at one and wherever this falls on the list is to verify that it is snug. I'm only doing this to the X axis. The any cubic video setup video shows you how to set up the other rollers on the um, Z axis and the Y axis. Just adopt the same philosophy as I've just described here and you won't go wrong. And don't worry about it if you have to repeat. I'm going to show you how to be able to, to test 
on a calibration cube. All right, so before you go moving any of those axes around, supposedly it potentially bad for the controller that you could be generating some uh, voltage through the lines by manipulating the motor. So I want you to go in, I want you to press menu, I want you to go down, whoops, a little too far, move axis, all the way down to disable the steppers, okay? So now that they're disabled, you can push around the y-axis, the x-axis, uh, it's no big deal. Just want to make sure you do that first. All right, so belt tension. Although the Cobra Go setup video shows you how to be able to uh, increase the belt tension or decrease it, it doesn't explain to you how to be able to know that you have good belt tension in order to be able to get good prints. So I had to run a series of tests and I ended up printing about 15 calibration cubes in order to be able to zero in on getting the right belt tension for this thing. So once I had the right belt tension, then I created this little jig here. And what you're gonna see is that the jig has steps on it that are at two millimeter increments. So for uh, the calibrated cube, I found the belt tension to be the best right where the arrow points and this is the belt tension for the x and the y axis i'm going to show you on the x axis first it's a little bit more difficult it's a little bit of a nuisance to get your hand in underneath here and to pull the belt down so that you can slip this little jig in and what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that the print head is pushed the furthest away from you possible meaning that it is not sitting on the home switch. And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna go and insert it to the point where it is easy to get to the steps. Now, I'm right on the line. If I tried to go one more, it's very, very difficult for me to try to go there. I'd be stretching the belt too far. So this is a setup that I've got that works very, very well. And I will show you uh, coming up shortly, what to look for on a calibration cube in order to be able to know that you've got it dialed in properly. Just as a side note, just to let you know, on my calibration cubes, I like to have a three wall thickness. The reason why I like that is that the infill will not end up showing on the outer walls when you add a third wall. The default is two, I add an extra one, that makes it nice and smooth, makes it easier to analyze the exterior of the cube and know that you got your belt tension right. So stick around, we'll move on to the next step. Slide, same thing of course, two millimeter increments up to the 13. Of course I didn't start at zero, right? But this increment is the 13. And so basically I'm making sure that the bed is pushed all the way back. I'm gonna lift the belt and I'm going to insert the belt and push it through until I get to the 13. If I try to go the next one up, I'm gonna put too much strain on that belt and I don't wanna do that. So I've already tested out these settings thoroughly, 15 calibration cubes that I've played with to get to this point and this will get you in the neighborhood. So I'll show you how to fine tune once you've set up and the STL for this will be in the description a link to uh, Thingiverse for being able to download it and print it then you can just verify the accuracy of your printer by just taking a caliper and measuring all right so after you've printed a calibration cube and you've inspected it and you feel like you might need to make some adjustments to the belt tension what I like to do is to be able to give myself a reference to where I'm at I created the tension using the jig and now I want to be able to come back to this position so that I have a platform to work from. So I just took a post-it note, cut off the sticky part, wrapped it around the knob, put a label on here so that I have a reference point and now I can go and make adjustments. Oh, the after inspecting, it seems like the belt is too loose. I can go and I can uh, do a half turn to create more tension on the belt print a calibration cube, and then inspect it to see, did I make it better? Did I make it worse? 
for the most part, if you're going to make adjustments, I would make adjustments of a half turn. The reason why is that knob is connected to a very small screw, so a half a turn does not actually move the pulley that much to create more tension. But I did that on both the X and the Y axis and found that it worked very, very well for me to be able to, be able to narrow it down to be able to guide you to what I think is a good belt tension with the little jig that I uh, that I drew up. Okay, so I want to give you an example of when the belt is too loose and you're going to have to bear with me just for a second here because I want to get the light to hit this cube so that you can see those lines, those vertical lines on this cube. Okay, my thumb is on the base and so those vertical lines are a sign that the belt is too loose and in this case that was the x-axis so i kept on printing cubes and dialing in until those lines went away so like i said they're basically they're ripples you know so if i run my thumbnail across them in other words perpendicular to them i can feel the ripples with my thumbnail versus when i dialed it in and I printed it again, and I'm going to try to hit the light again uh, just right. So, you know, you can it looks like really fine lines, but with the naked eye, you can't actually see that. And if I run my thumbnail across that, it feels smooth. It doesn't feel wavy. So I dialed my way up to the point where these went away, and then I went another half dial up only to see that there was no change, no difference between that. So I backed it off a half turn because why am I gonna put more tension on the belt than is actually required? It's just gonna be putting strain on the stepper motor bearings, you know? So those pulleys are connected directly to the stepper motor, which means that the tension that you put on the pulley, pulley goes directly onto the stepper motor bearings. So I really hope that this helps. Uh, anybody who has any questions or anything, please uh, leave a comment. My intention here is just to help out uh, newbies who may be struggling or anyone who may be struggling with this thing. And I just felt that there was more description needed on the setup video. Anyways, thanks very much for watch watching.